Hello everyone, welcome to the EBM Scholars. This is EBM Ernest Brufus Makulilo and today I'm making a tutorial video on how to fill the form public charge questionnaire DSC 5540. So I will not put my face, it will be more on the computer recording the screen and showing you step by step on how to fill the form which is the most recently one has been released uh, public charge form or public charge questionnaire form DS5540 because this is one of the most important form you need to know if you are applying for green card lottery uh, and you have won the green card lottery you are processing to come through green card lottery but also if you are processing you are outside of the United States and you are processing to come to the United States through any other ways of green card. So this is a form. I will explain who needs to fill the form and how to go about it. But before we go further, uh, as I said, this is EBM Scholars channel. And if you go to youtube.com uh, slash EBM Scholars, this is my channel where, first of all, I would like to appreciate everyone who has been supporting me. Up to now, I have... Uh, 29,000.8. So within a few days, two or three days to come, I'll be 30,000. So I would like to appreciate everyone for your continued support to my YouTube channel and being able to watch uh, all these videos I've been posting every single day. So this makes me give me uh, a lot of uh, energy to keep uh, uploading the videos as you can see so i like uh, to say thank you everyone and to continue if you haven't subscribed please uh, please do that so let's go back to the video so today videos i'm going to explain the public charge rule i have a separate video i've already explained in detail about what is public charge and the overall and who is exempt and everything about that today i want to focus more about the form because it will be a little, a little bit longer video if I have to put everything. So I'm just focused about the, uh, about the form, but I will put a link uh, on the description uh, of my previous videos I've talked about the public charge. But in a quick way, uh, I will just highlight overall what is the form DS5540, what is this form public charge form, and who needs to fill this form, how to fill the form will be the main part of the form, and overall, what are the supporting documents you need to have after filling the form when you are going to the interview to the consular officer? What documents do you need to have to accompany with this form public charge? Okay, so in a very high level, so uh, the new administration, I mean, the current administration under Donald J. Trump, uh, they passed the leg regulations or the law that the people who are applying for green card, whether it will be by marriage, whether it will be by lottery, whether it will be employment, whatever kind of green card, or rather what you can simply say immigrant visa, need to, pro to, to prove that they are not going to be public charge. That's why the form is called a public charge form. That means you are not coming here to the United States of America to depend on the government uh, support. So you need to prove there that you have money you, or you have assets then you have good education or you have good work experience once you come here you can be able to survive you, without depending on the government so again who needs to fill this form it's very very uh, easy uh, <clears throat> the person supposed to fill the form is any person who is applying for the green card uh, of any kind but it will be more referring to people who are applying, uh, especially who are appearing to the consular, who are outside of the United States to apply. That's why the form is called DS5, as you can see here, DS55. When I say DS, DS stands for Department of State. So that's it is. People who are, are in the US, they, they will fill a different form. I, which is immigration form number 864, affidavit of support form, which is a different from this one. So this is just like some sort of affidavit of support, but specifically, I will go into detail to explain about this particular form, how to fill it. So, okay, let's go to the form. So the form I will explain, uh, starting from this main part at the top hand right corner 
of this form. These three important areas are very important to know. Uh, one, there is a control number. This number doesn't change. Uh, it's just kind of that, the control number of the form. Then there is expiration date of the form. When does this form expires? So the, in the US, as you know, we put uh, how we write our date. We start with the month, day, then year. So it, the expression date of this form is August 31st, this year, 2020, meaning that after this date, the Department of State will update this form and give the brand new form. Maybe it might be the same, or there are certain things they will add or reduce. So that is the meaning that after this date, they will, it expires, then they'll give... Uh, so don't get confused if you have won the Green Card Lottery DV 2021, but if you are filling the form before this date, you have this form, but at that time, when you're going to fill this form, there will be a printed form. And they put here the estimated burden time. That means how long will you be able to fill this form in a normal pace? Obviously, it will be, they say, four, uh, four hours and 30, I mean, 4.5 hours. So, but the aim of this one is just to let you know that this form is not a joke. It's not just you are going there, you rush quickly and you are going to finish finish within five minutes. No, it's a little bit of form which needs you to put documents, you need to put information in a very correct way, in a very, uh, without rushing. So, but basically, even if you're going to fill this form, you're not going to spend over four hours just to fill this form. So, unlike, different from when you apply for the Green Card Lottery, when there is a Burden, in the estimated burden that means after certain minutes, if you don't finish, the form disappears or it cannot go through. This form is a fillable PDF. When I say fillable PDF, that means you can be able to type on the PDF. You can be able to type. That's why there are all these presses. You can be able to type. You see? I will show you. So what you need to do, my advice will be print out this form, fill the form with a pen, and then come to fill with uh, on the computer. So you fill this form. Once you finish filling this form, you will go with this form to the visa interview. You don't fill this form to send it to KCC. KCC, they need certain uh, docu documents you need to have. The documents like uh, the documents they need will be your passport, birth certificate, police clearance record, uh, marriage certificate if you have kids, those kind of things. They don't need the public charge form. The public change form is not needed under this time. So only things needed at this time, uh, I mean, at the submission of the documents is just those kind of what I said. But this will go with it at the U.S. Embassy. So some of the embassies, they might request this document you have. Some might not request you. So my advice is very simple. Prepare this form and just have it in your folder. In case they request it, you give them. Because if you don't have it, they request it, they, you, they'll give a few days to go to fill the form, then you come back another day to submit that form. So in order to avoid all those complications, because most of the invitation to the visa interview, they might not write to you, come with this, this document, public change form. And some of the embassies, they might not request this one. So, but no matter what, it's better to fill it, have it just as a backup, just in case, if they require this form, then you submit that form. Okay, this form has parts, nine parts. So part one, part two, I will quickly go through these parts before I go into detail. So part one is a personal information. Personal information, that means is information about yourself. That means what is your name, uh, where were you, whatever, date of birth, things of that nature. Part two will be uh, the health part, your healthy situation. Uh, there is a video I already talked about, uh, you must prove, you need to prove that, uh, let me show you these videos uh, to make it easier for you. Because I already talked about this one, about it. So the public charge uh, video is this one. Uh, let me make it bigger so that I can be able to explain to you. So the public charge form is this form. I mean, the, the video is this one. And then there is a video about it. Uh, uh, you need to, uh, you, they can suspend someone uh, if you're financial, you're going to be financial burden on the healthcare system. So these videos, they are very, very crucial videos. So if you haven't watched these two videos, please do so. 
So because there will be a, a healthy part because you can say that you have health insurance and I will explain how to go about it, things of that nature. Then part three is talking about the household, uh, the number, how many people are coming with you to the United States of America. So don't start to put your uncle, don't put your, 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 your neighbor, don't put the, whatever. Put the people you are coming with in the United States. And these people, if you are married, you put your married, the name of your spouse, yourself. If you have kids, your biological kids, or the kids' uh, stepchildren, or adopted children with the court documentation. So don't just put these people here while these people, they are not in the DSC 260. So the people you're going to put here are the people also in the DSC 260. I will talk about it. Then part four is assets. This is the most uh, important part because this part is the one which is going to determine are you going to be public charge or not to help that one. That one including, uh, so that's what we see, there will be so many parts. And then there will be another part talking about your education and your skills. So this also will be able to determine if you are going, you are coming here to be a uh, public charge or not. Then there is part six, if you have used the translator, if someone helped you to prepare this form, part seven, then if you have additional information, uh, then there is a signature part. So that is the overall parts of this form. But I will go step by step. I don't want you to have excuse, oh, I did this uh, a mistake. As I said, you need to print out this form, fill this form by with a pen. Then after that, you come to fill the form uh, on the computer. So you start with your last name. Remember, you start with your last name, Makurilo. Last, first name, Ernest. Middle name, Boniface. So date of birth. Remember, date of birth in the US, as I mentioned, you start with the month, day, yeah, so don't put your month, your day first. So I was born on September 23, 1981. So assume I've never been to you, United States. So let's take that assumption. I've never been to the United States in my entire life. But if you have ever been to the United States, whether you, then you, you became illegal, whatever it is, if you have ever been to the United States, you have to say, remember, Number one inf uh, requirement, fill this information with the true information. Don't lie. Because if you said you've never been to the United States of America, while they gave you the visa to one year, if they put your name there, they will know that you have been to the United States before. So let's say, assume I've never been to the United States because I'm assuming this one, many people who are filling this form have never been to the United States. So the answer is no. Say you have never been to the United States. Do you currently have health insurance? Now, this is just uh, uh, information about you. Then we come to the part two, health information. Do you currently have health insurance coverage in the United States? If you are not in the United States, you don't have health insurance in the United States. It will be crazy uh, that you live in Tanzania, you live in Ghana, you live in Sudan, and then you have health insurance, excuse me, you have health insurance of the United States instead of your country. So. Obviously, you will say, no, you don't have because you are there. But yeah, so this form is, I'm assuming you are filling this form. You are not living in America. If you live in America, you will fill another form, which is, uh, uh, you will fill this form, but also you will fill also the affidavit of support form. So you will say, yes, you have if you are here. But so if you, the question is, if you answered yes to the item four, attach your health insurance. So that's why I said at the end, we'll, we'll talk about what documents do you need to have in order to proceed here. So if you say yes, uh, then you will skip to, uh, to part three. You can continue, but yeah. But if you say no, you don't have, which in this case, you don't have health insurance. So you proceed with this item, you, you fill this item. But if you, you have health insurance, you say yes, then you, you skip, you, you continue. There is no need to fill 4A. But because you don't have, then you need to, to fill. This is where I talked about the other video. So this is the video I talked about the suspension of the, uh, let me show you the video. Sorry, sorry. Uh, so this is the video I've talked about uh, green card suspension of entry of immigrants who will financially burden the United Healthcare system. 
meaning you needed to make sure that once when you come to the United States, you are able to have health insurance. So you have to prove that either you have health insurance, that whether you purchase the health insurance, which I don't advise you to do right now, or you, 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 once you arrive here within 30 days, you have. So the question is, will you be covered by health insurance in the United States within 30 days of your entry in the United States? The answer is supposed to be yes. If you say no, that means you are going to be public charge. You will be depending on health insurance of the government. That means they are not going to give you the visa. So you have to say, yes, I will be covered in health insurance within that one. So if your answer is yes, now you come here. Identify the spe specific health insurance and that coverage will begin. So because you don't have health insurance, what you need to do, you go to the Google search. Then you can find uh, maybe temporary uh, health insurance plans, maybe in whatever state you are. So you can tell uh, maybe for green card holders, you can find like there are those kind of uh, temporary health insurance, for instance. So you can find that there are so many health insurance. So you go and find uh, the premium. So maybe the zip code, that is my zip code. So you put your information, then you get uh, quotes uh, of your health insurance. So that's what we'll be doing. So you get the, those quotes, like if you are going, as, assumption is, if you are going to get the health insurance, maybe they will say maybe it's 200 uh, health insurance, depending on the number of household, which you are going to put here, it will, then you are going to get the health insurance, temporary health insurance, uh, how much will that be? So once you get that one, you will say, uh, it will be maybe, I'm giving you an example, uh, Blue Shield health insurance, uh, the nature of the coverage you will put here, the date, the date you, you because you'll be having the interview, because while you, you are filling this form, you only have the interview date, for instance. So you will plan, maybe you are coming here, maybe on May 2nd. So you put like it will start on May 3rd, for instance, after one day after arriving in the United States. Then you will print the uh, quotes, quotations you got from uh, from that insurance company, the one they, they will produce for you, like you are, your assumption you are going like to pay, but you don't pay, they'll give you the exact quotes. So that quote will be part of the attachment you'll be having when you go to the visa interview. But don't worry about this one. Don't worry about it when you win and you want to fill the form. So don't start with me. How can I get health insurance now? You are not, don't complicate this life. Wait until you have won this one, then ask me that particular question. Then you come to the part three, household uh, uh, size. What is the size? The size of the household, don't start to put your aunt, don't start to put your uncle, don't start to put you, uh, any person who lives with you, your, your house girl, your house boy, whatever, no. List the expected members of your household in the United States. Meaning here, because if you are not in the United States, it means put the list of people who will be coming with you in the United States of America. So, and the names you are putting them here, remember, you need to put the names as they appear in the passport. You put the age, relationship to you, others relationship to you will be your children, your spouse. What is the current job of these people? Are they US citizen or no? So it's no. Was he or she on active duty or other than any other training US military? No, he's not. Because if you're not a green card holder, you are coming from your country, you are not serving the US military. So the answer will be no. So then you, you post, like you so saw, the husband, wife, maybe two kids, three kids. But what if you have more than three kids? Because this one, two, three, four, five space, then you have to create extra paper. You have to go on the, you need to create another, uh, what? Just like Microsoft Word, create another table like this one. Then you will add. That's why at the end here, there is. Uh, I will let me quickly show you. Oh, oh, sorry. At the end here, there is a press. The the thing. Do you have any additional information? If needed, uh, if uh, if further space is required, attach additional sheet. 
please ensure you specify what questions you are responding. So if you have more than five five people in your, the household, the one will be coming to America. So this will be one person, the second one, third, fourth, fifth. So if you have six people, so you have to create another sheet we will have like name of the person, the age, relationship, the same table as it appears, we will say part three, exactly like how it is. Then you come to part four. Part four needs to, you ask it. So this, I said, is a bigger part because this one is very important to you uh, because it determines so many things. It's the only part in this section uh, which, uh, which takes like almost three pieces of paper just to explain to you, because how are they going to determine if you're going to be public charge in the US? They're going to determine based on your assets, resources, and the financial status. In addition to that, they're going with educational work experience. So, uh, so the question is, list below all US federal tax returns. So if you have never been to US, you don't have United States federal return. You have never filed the tax in the United States. So if you have you have been to US. Currently, you're in the US, you are filling this form. This will be easy for you because you list below all uh, US federal, federal tax return you have filed within the last three years and they attach the transcript, IRS transcript. But if you have never been to the United States, meaning you don't have the tax return in the United States, but that doesn't mean that. You cannot fill this part. This part is still you have to put uh, you have to put the income. So it will not be federal tax because it's not. Uh, it will be, for instance, you are from Kenya. It will be uh, Kenya tax. I'm giving an example. Uh, so you put the uh, tax year maybe uh, for the maybe to be 2018. I'm giving an example. Uh, did you find the tax return? Federal, we say no, because you are not in the U.S., so it's not a federal tax in here. Then what is your income in the U.S. dollar? So if your salary, I'm giving you an example, take your salary in local shillings and convert into U.S. dollar. So maybe your salary, excuse me, your salary in U.S. dollar is 15,000. So it would be 15,000. That. The salary is income per year. So remember, it's not income per month. So take your income per month times amount per year. And this amount is the salary. It's not about take home, whatever. You put the salary before you take the tax. That is your salary. The gross income, the overall income, you are including all, everything before deduction. Then you put the another year, 2019. Then the year, uh, whatever it comes to, year 2020. I'm giving example. So you didn't file the tax return federal, then you put your income again and you put your income again in US dollar. Remember that one. And remember, you didn't file US tax return because you are not in the United States, so it's not a federal. So you didn't file the federal tax. You file the tax, uh, the whatever. If you're from Ghana, you put uh, Ghana, whatever, tax or Ghana income, whatever. Just, or you can put just Ghana, income that means this income was accumulated in the country of ghana not us and you are from you are Ghanaian. for that case you don't need to file the tax return for the united states unless otherwise you are already in us and you can file this one so another question is did you work in the united states in the last three years but not file the tax whatever the answer will be no. If you did, you, did you work? No, you have never worked in the United States. But if you worked in the United States and you didn't file the tax, you were in so much trouble. You have to explain why you didn't file the tax. In case you didn't know, for those who are coming to the United States, here the issue of tax is very complicated. It is better to do other crimes than avoiding tax. There is certain uh, things you have to be very careful. Tax. Uh, rights of children, rights of women. Those are no jokes here. Do whatever you want, but those things you have to... Don't make sure that you can... Yeah, don't do any mistake on that one. Or driving under influence while driving while you are drinking. Yeah. So, obviously, you didn't, you didn't work in the United States, so it, did, it doesn't apply to you. Then, we come to the income. 
what is your current income on the yearly compensation? Here we are talking about compensation means your salary. So your yearly salary is how much? Maybe I'm giving you an example. It's 15,000, so you put that amount. If you, are, if, you, if you currently have a job awaiting in the United States, or United States, who is your employer and what is your yearly compensation in the U.S. dollar? So some, some people, they might already apply for jobs in the U.S. And somebody promised you a job that once you, get to the, you come to America with green card, uh, will give you a job. So don't put here just to tell them, the, the, to, to lie to them. As I said, you must be very, very honest. Because if you say, I already have a job offer, because your friend, your host, will say, oh, it's easier to get a job here. You can just come here and work in Walmart. And you go there and put Walmart here. Uh, uh, you put Walmart here. And whatever you put here in the amount, no, don't do that. Because if the request you give, show us the contract, you don't have the contract, you'll be in so much trouble. So if you don't have, and likely you will not have, unless otherwise already is a, there is a company wants you, but most of the company will not give you job before even getting the visa over there because you don't have even a social security. They can promise you that, but if they promise you, they have to give you any writing. But if you don't have, just put it that way. So you don't have a job, so your income will be zero, basically. Your compensation is zero, or you can just put doesn't apply because you don't have. List below any income not listed above. You might have other income, but this one. So list below any income not listed above, you will continue to receive after arriving in the United States. So for instance, they give the example. If you have a house in, in your country, and once you come back, you come in the U.S., maybe that house you used to rent to people. People give you money for renting. So that means you'll continue receiving the rent. If you have stocks, you'll be receiving dividends as normal. If you are already retired over there, you'll continue receiving pension in your country. If you are receiving child support in your country, you'll continue receiving child support. So this is the income, not based on the salaries, the other income you'll be receiving. For instance, you have you maybe you are maybe you'll continue working as a freelancer. For instance, you are a blogger. So you can continue doing a blog while you are in the US because you are writing or sending, you continue getting the money based on the blog post you pay, you, you send. Or you are writing with the newspaper, you are writing to them some some columns, articles, then they pay you. So there are certain income you'll continue receiving, but that income is not just the normal income is here. Does that make sense? So make sure that you put that income and the income which has to put uh, in US dollar. Again, this one will be also per year. So per year, maybe you say, okay, I will be getting maybe 10,000 per year. Don't just say, because they will ask this information in detail at the US embassy. How do you get this one per year? How do you get it? So you have to explain like, okay, uh, I have a house. This house people are renting each month. They give me maybe one thousand US dollar or eight hundred US dollar. So for that case, if I times by twelve, I'll continue receiving this money even if I'm in the United States. So that means they see what income you have. So here you come to explain what type of income you are receiving. So for instance, you will say uh, rent of the rent you are receiving. So this they want to explain how this ten thousand you came to get this ten thousand. So type of income is rent. Uh, how often do you receive this income annually, monthly? So you can say maybe if it's, maybe I'm giving an example, maybe it's 500 monthly. How do you receive, I'm sorry, it will be monthly and this is the amount, maybe 500 per month. I'm giving an example. If it is per year, you put it per year. So another income, you can say uh, maybe you are receiving stock dividends. How, how often? Yearly. How much do you get it? Maybe yearly. So if this is uh, per year, how much are you going to get that one? Maybe you say maybe uh, 6,000. I'm giving you an example. That is what you are getting. Maybe uh, you say uh, you say maybe uh, freelancing blogging uh, monthly. So how much do you get on freelancing? Uh, this will be uh, online. 
because it doesn't matter where will you be staying. So you can be in the US, you can still get in. We can be good. So monthly, we say I'm getting maybe $50. I'm giving example. So how much total do you get? So uh, in the end, so let's say, let's times this one. Uh, let's do this one. Everything, let's make it easy to be in, uh, to be per year. So that means if you are getting uh, 500 per month, that means uh, it will be uh, 500 per month. So this one also will be, uh, so let's say it will be 6,000 per year. So let's say, let's put all per year. Make it easy. So I'm just putting like per year, but in the end it will be per month, whatever. So monthly this one will be times whatever, times 12. So you can put, uh, so uh, you can uh, you can put the fifty dollar times twelve, which will be six hundred. Uh, this one will be twelve, uh, so it'll be twelve thousand. Uh, that will be per year. We'll be getting this amount uh, per year. So this this income is the one you are going to put here twelve. Right. So you put it that way. Then, then you come here, list the assets available in your, uh, 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 what kind of assets do you have? So here, the asset you're going to put, you say, okay, my assets, I have cash, actual bank amount. How much do you have in your bank account? So I have maybe 3,000. So, I mean, sorry, uh, location of the asset. What kind of that means is checking account you put the name of the bank. So for those, let's say maybe you can you can say maybe uh, uh, commercial bank. Okay, so that is the location. Then how much do you have in your bank account? So don't put amount here ten thousand. What is not in because they, if they ask bank statement, you need to have the bank statement. So that is the checking account. How much do you have in your saving account? So maybe uh, again on the commercial bank. How much do you have in, your, uh, uh, in, in over here? Maybe five thousand. You put five thousand. If you don't have anything in US dollar, if it's two hundred, just put amount you have. Because if they say going to bring your bank statement, you need it to have. Don't lie. You'll be so much disappointed. Then, uh, for instance. Uh, Maybe I'm giving you an example uh, what uh, you can say other, for instance, which other you have specified in eight uh, over here. So you can say, uh, maybe you can say what other kind of, uh, okay, uh, for instance, like you can put non-cash assets, for instance, real estate, uh, apartment. then it gives you how much do you get amount kind of that. So things of that nature. So these are the things like, uh, or, uh, for instance, retirement, whatever. So any amount you have, you must make sure that you put it here. Then it comes here, liability. How many debt do you have? So for instance, you, you have a mortgage. Like you, 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 you bought, so how much do you, you owe to the company. Then, if you have maybe a car loan, you put it here. Personal loan, maybe someone is a uh, personal loan. How much is a personal loan? You loan, you got a loan from someone, maybe 1500. Then mortgage, I'm giving you an example. Uh, maybe you can say uh, 100. So just, unless others you have. Car loan, maybe let's say 3000. So I'm giving just example, if you have, uh, things of that nature so you need to put it that way uh of things of that you must put you must indicate uh everything you owe as a debt then from there you can be able to to continue uh so then they will ask you for total i'm giving example but this one looks bigger because there is a mortgage i'm sure many people who are applying they don't have a mortgage. 
they don't have kind of that. And in most countries, in developing countries, you have your house, like you built your house, you don't owe anybody. It's not like in America or Europe, whatever you owe the mortgage. So if you don't that way, that means it will be, I'm giving you an example. So let's say this is the amount will be uh, liability. So apart from that, then you come to this part. Uh, for the purpose of this form, uh, a public benefit, because we don't want to be a public charge. For the public benefit means that uh, we are talking about forms of assistance. So unless others have received any assistance, public assistance, federal, state, local assistance, cash, whatever, fully stamp, this is what is explaining. After February 24th, 2020, that means this will be in, uh, considering you. But because majority of people who are filling this form are outside in the United States of America. So this doesn't apply to you. So the answer will be no, you have never received. So the answer will be no. But if it's yes, you, are, you live in America and you have received it from February 24, continuing. But this one, you must, uh, during the period, uh, period of, uh, so if, uh, if the answer is yes, you are living in the U.S. and you are receiving these benefits, you have to specify the type of benefit you are receiving. Is that just like a food stamp or is just that just like housing voucher, something like that? You have to specify what type. But this one will say no, majority of you are filling this form uh, outside of America. So we say no. Then, so this will be, oh, this is just public charge, I mean the public benefits. So all this will be, you skip this one. Then you come the education. Have you graduated the high school or in the high school diploma? The only diploma here, remember, this is what talking about American English. American English diploma doesn't mean the level of education. Many people after finishing high school, they go to take a diploma between the bachelor degree and high school. Diploma means the certificate, that is the actual certificate you are receiving. When they say, uh, uh, university diploma. When they say diploma, they mean this certificate. This one, what is, which says you have received the bachelor of uh, this one. This is what we call uh, what this is what we call diploma. So this is a university diploma. So there is a transcript and there is a diploma. So all these are diplomas. So. Have you finished high school? The answer is yes, if you have finished high school. If you haven't, say no. So if you say no, then what is the highest level of education you have received? You will put your level of education. I, I finished junior high school, for instance. But if you finish high school, you say yes. So if answered yes, list the other education degrees you have earned. So if you finish high, high school, if you didn't finish, that means what is the highest level? If you finish, maybe what other level? You will say maybe master's degree or bachelor's degree. If it's master's or it's a PhD, you put it there. Do you have any, any occupational skills? Occupational skills here, yes or no? What I mean here, is do you have a certificate? Do you have a CPA? For instance, uh, for instance, you are CPA. You are a lawyer, so you went to a law school. You have certification. You went to school, social work. You have license as a social worker. You have registered. You are registered. Yes, you have a certification of that nature. Uh, you are you are you are, you are accountant. You are CPA. So put your CPA here. So who issued your CPA? License number if you have expression date of that one. So that's what we mean. If you have a certificate, welding certificate, put in the professional certificate you have the information. You went for the this country like uh, there are so many school uh, school trade schools. They give you certificate specific certification, so you can put it here. Don't put a certificate Microsoft Word certificate. What we mean like certificate like a Cisco certification. Not I, I, I want to, to study computer to learn Microsoft Word. No, that is not a certificate. We mean like Cisco, those, are, uh, those kind of like high level things about certification of that nature. 
uh, uh, things related to about programming, those kind of certification. Then after that, it comes to here, uh, translator. Did you use a translator to help to complete this form? The answer is no, if you haven't used a translator. If yes, you put a translator, assume you are a Spanish person, you use someone because this form is in English, so you use someone, so that someone, you'll put the name of that person, you'll put the name, uh, first name, middle name, uh, if they have, is a company you use, the translator's address, uh, the city, whatever the address of the person, the phone number of the translator, the email of the translator, you put the information if you have used the translator. But if you didn't use, you just click no, then you continue. Then this is another important question. Uh, preparer of this form, did you, did you, anyone other than a translator, if you use a translator, help you to complete this form? Meaning this video doesn't help you to feel like someone like you, did you go to a lawyer, give the lawyer, the law office helped you to fill this form. But if you watch a video, if you want to, if you decide to go to the uh, to the Google search to YouTube to watch videos how to fill the form, that doesn't mean that someone helped help, someone asked you to uh, helped you to prepare the form. No, when they say did any person help you to prepare the form, they mean did any person like a law firm or someone fill this form from number one to on your behalf. That is the point. So for that case, if no one prepare. Uh, if it's no, that means you skip this one. If a person like a, law, a certain lawyer, you'll put the name of the person, last name, first name, middle name, business law firm, prepare of this person in whatever, and all this information, you put them here. But if you watch this video and you go to do on your own and you ask someone a question, okay, what does this, should I put the phone number or whatever? That doesn't, the person didn't help you. So we say, you know, I fill the form, everything I prepared myself. Yes, you, you ask him for help, but did no one uh, fill this form on your behalf? No. So then after that, you come here, you print this form, you are finished. You print the form and then you sign and when they say print name, name when they say print, in America when they say print your name, that means write your name in capital letters, meaning it will be easier for someone to read your name. And again, you have to put the date. And remember, the date in America, you start with a month, day, then a year. Or you can put January, March, you can write by, by, by writing, not just zero one. you can put the word January 21st, 2021. January 20, you can put the word January, like a name in words, instead of putting like how they put at the top. So once you finish right up to here, you print out, then you, you sign, you put your name in capital letters, and then you put your date here. So this form is not about almost an hour. No. I mean, it's not like four hours, like they put it here. No. It's just easy like that way. So once you finish, you print the form. So if you come to print the form, you'll see you can save and print just to have it just in case. Uh, it's a PDF you can have, you can print it uh, uh, just. So it will be like a printable uh, kind like. So you'll see everything will be like that way, already filled everything. And then you go and you can also save the form. Just if you want to come to make changes later, that means you can just do quick changes instead of starting filling from the beginning. So after that, what documents do you need to have? So you don't just mention uh, that uh, I have this income. If you're in the US, you need to have tax return. Uh, if you say you have uh, current income, like, uh, uh, for instance, current income, I have a job, you need to have all this kind of information already. Or in the income part, you need to put to have this information, like this is the income, like uh, what kind of money do you, uh, how much income do you receive, like what is kind of that. So you need to have those information, if they ask those kind of documents, you need to have. Uh, so... Then 
that means I'm talking about the pay, pay slip, pay tabs, whatever those things you need to have them. Then you need to have proof of other income. If you have a house, you have rent, what are the contracts with other people? You need to have, just in case, have them. You said you have money in the bank, checking account and receiving account. Have the bank statement. Uh, proof of assets. You said you, you, you own the house, you own a, a farm. Have those kind of things, like what are printed documents, what the document do you have to prove that you own those kind of things. Then uh, you said uh, you, you finish maybe bachelor degree. Come with your transcript, certificate, come with that one. Then uh, the, uh, you say, uh, here you said you, all, you already have what? Uh, education. You said you have certification. You, have, you, you are certified maybe board of directors, body of, uh, of, uh, of engineers. You have certification. Or you have certification maybe of uh, your mediator. Come with that certificate of mediation. Come with your, uh, your CPA certificate. So those things you need to come with that one. And again, as at the beginning, I said here, uh, do you have health insurance? You said the answer is no. So if the answer is no, are you going to have within 30 days? You said yes. So here you say, uh, identify the name of the, you put the name of the health insurance company and date. You can say maybe you are, you are, you are coming here, maybe October, you put, you start October 2020, for instance, that may be whatever, that you, you uh, will start. And then you come with this, uh, that uh, insurance you have got from the internet, communicate with the company, uh, the court from the company, you also attach that one as health insurance information. So that is also something you need to have uh, is something of that nature. Uh, the good news is that there is no filing fee. There is no any fee you needed to pay uh, just by filling this form. This form is free of charge because it will be part of the money already paid for the visa fee, 330. So you need to fill the, uh, for, uh, file this form uh, uh, without any particular problem. So there is no any extra cost just by this particular form. So if you have any question about the public charge questionnaire, uh, please put in the comment below. And again, uh, as I said, there are these videos already the public charge, the healthy uh, care system and the public charge form uh, information. I've been already talking about this one. Please go and watch those videos and I'll put these videos on the, uh, on the uh, below just to make sure that on the video, uh, on the comment below, you can be able uh, to, to read. So when I say like on the description of the video, so usually on the description, or oh, if you come here, when I put like uh, the video on the title, there is words here, then you will find the description of the particular uh, particular video. Uh, so for instance, let me show you uh, what does that mean? So if you go to the video, like, uh, sorry, 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 sorry. So if you come here, there will be a video and then there will be a link. I will be putting the link on that nature. So. Those are the videos uh, I've been talking, uh, public charge uh, and other things. So if you have any question, uh, please uh, give me, the, uh, ask him, I mean, just put it here, I will be able to answer that one. But don't start worrying this one even before the results. Uh, because people start filling this form, even you haven't, you haven't checked the results. After winning, communicate with me. Don't start, okay, so how do I fill this particular part? How do you fill it while you haven't even won yet? So don't complicate your life. Wait and see how things will be going. Uh, sorry, it is a very long video, but it needed to be long so that I can be able to answer all these questions in a very correct way. So thank you. Thank you again, everyone. I really I appreciate your support, continued support of my YouTube channel, and I wish you all the best. Uh, if you have any question again, uh, do that. Sub uh, ask me the question. If you haven't subscribed, do that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. So... Thank you again, and all the best, everyone, for the results, public charge, and if you have any question, let me know. Goodbye, everyone.